welcome to our, our next series of webinars for Tracer Plus. Um, for this webinar, we are focused on the ideas uh, behind the lookup feature within Tracer Plus. This happens to be one of our uh, most useful features and oftentimes uh, one of the more misunderstood features. So hopefully this seminar can help uh, some of the folks out there who, who really want to use lookups and, and maybe aren't quite sure how to do it. Um, what you should see on the screen behind you is um, is our Trace Plus desktop product where we're going to do a, primarily most of the configurations. Um, so I should talk a little bit about that. So the first thing we'll do is, is just create a new project. Uh, in this case, we'll call it Lookup Training, I guess is good. Um, and in this project, we're going to create two sessions. Uh, a session, I guess, could be best be envisioned in uh, a Tracer Plus context as, as a place where data is, is centrally located. Um, a lot of times when we think of it, we think of it as, as a um, data involved in a process. So when you're, when you're doing receiving in your warehouse or you're doing shipping in your warehouse, uh, that, that concept of receiving would, would typically be set up as like a session within Tracer Plus. Um, and again, shipping would just be a separate session. Uh, for lookups, the idea of sessions is kind of important because what lookups allow you to do is, is share data between sessions, which prior to lookups wasn't really uh, available within Tracer Plus. So for any database guys out there, uh, a lookup could be roughly compared to, to a, a join between tables in a database. Um, I guess that's a pretty fair comparison. And as we go through it, um, you know, some of the relationship between the two sessions will become more obvious. So for this training, um, I'm going to use the concept of of asset tracking and auditing assets. Uh, so in that case, for this simple scenario, you know, you may have a user who wants to go out and do a quarterly audit of assets. Um, they're going to also potentially want to reference any asset information as they're scanning. Uh, so we're going to use two sessions. One to actually record the transaction, which is oftentimes used in the audit trail of an asset. And then the other session is really just going to be a uh, placeholder uh, for, for your asset master list, where your asset IDs are correlated to the descriptions and their locations and maybe their conditions, things along those lines. So you can see in, in, in this project, I, I clicked the Create Session button twice, and I created my two sessions. Uh, as I described, session one we're going to set up as the uh, asset scans or asset transactions. And what I like to do, and this is more of a personal preference, I guess, is is create my sessions first as, as the container for, for my fields, and then I come back and, and define the fields. Uh, that's pretty much entirely up to, to the designer within Tracer Plus, but that's the way we'll do it here. Uh, so again, for the transactions, we're going to store those in the asset scans. And for the second session, which we're mostly going to use to do the lookups, we're going to call this session uh, Asset Master. These names are really, uh, for both sessions and fields, are really just for human readability. They're not used in the system as far as referencing or anything like that. So you can name them pretty freely and even change the names after the fact pretty freely and not worry about breaking any relationships. Uh, so this field I'm going to, uh, I'm sorry, this session I'm going to call Asset Master and this is going to contain the relationship between your asset barcode or as I'm going to call it here, um, our asset ID and I don't know, a description for example and maybe a current location. And I think that's it for asset lookups. Maybe last scan. I'm not sure if we'll use this, but let's put it in there for fun. And then these rest of the fields I don't think we'll be using, but I'll leave them here just in case we want to um, use them later on. So again, this is just the asset master table. <clears throat> this is normally not interacted with too much with the user on the device itself. Otherwise, I would go ahead and, and design the form to, to allow you to capture data into it. But again, we're just using it for reference. So for the asset scans, it's going to be uh, similar in some cases. The first thing we're going to do is prompt the user to scan asset. Uh, the next thing we're going to do is present a description. Uh, third thing we're going to do is present the current location. And let's add a um, just an audit trail flag for, for when the asset was scanned. And I'll just call that scan date. And then again, I'll leave these fields open just for um, you know future use in this webinar. Um, 
So for the scan asset, this is really just going to be a straightforward text field because I intend that we'll be scanning into it. Uh, and typically, you would make that just a, a standard barcode field. This is, in this case, is a very important field because we're going to use it for the description, uh, which we're going to define as a lookup field type. And once you, once I define this field type as a lookup, you can see that my tab uh, populates with additional options for this lookup. Uh, so in any lookup, you have to define where you want to get your data. In this case, we want to get the description of the asset we just scanned from the actual asset master session. And the field we want to return is the description from that, from that lookup session. Uh, the next thing, which is just critically important, is, is how these two sessions are are connected. And in this case, we're connecting them by our scan asset field here, which is going to supply the, the unique asset ID to the, uh, for the local field and, and supply that to the remote field, which is defined in the asset master session um, as the asset ID. So in this case, it's, it happens to be field one and field one uh, making this join. Uh, and then there are a few other options down here. Um, including the trigger field, update source, append if not found, and our not found message. Uh, for the update source and append if not found, I'm going to circle back to those in a, in a secondary kind of portion of, the, of this webinar. But uh, for the moment, uh, we just define the relationship. The other thing we have to do is, is tell this lookup, when do you want to perform the lookup? And for performance reasons, you don't really want to uh, continuously be looking up, but more appropriately, just when your significant data has changed. Uh, in this case, we only have one relationship, so we do want to trigger it as soon as the asset tag is scanned. And we say, OK, as soon as this tag is scanned, go ahead and do the lookup. Uh, one other thing we can set here is our not found message. So if you scan an asset that's not found, this is the, this is the string that's returned to the description. Uh, and that's, that's just a freeform text field. You can make that whatever you want. Uh, and current location, again, is, is probably going to be stored in your uh, master table, and in this case, it's something you could actually program to override if you find that it's in a different location. Uh, for this first stage of this webinar, we're just going to present it and show you show you how it returns it. So in that vein, it's very similar to description. Uh, we're going to grab the data from Asset Master. We're going to return the current location, and our join is again based on the local scan of scan asset to the remote field asset ID. And again, we're going to trigger on. Uh, scan asset. And this is actually settable, but in this case we wanted to um, trigger on that. Uh, and the not found message is actually unique to each field. Even though these are looking up into the same table, you, you can independently um, set a not found message. And I'll just set that to distinguish um, when we do it. You can distinguish that those two are different. Uh, for scan date, you know, this is, this is just a common field, like a time date stamp, to attach to any transaction or audit trail type record. Uh, in this case, it's not going to be a lookup. It's going to stay as a field type of text. But we are going to set the, the data type to be date time. And then we'll format that. Um, I, I typically use just a month, day, year, and an hour, minute, seconds type format. But you can see there are just a bunch of options here. Uh, for this uh, webinar, I think that's appropriate. Uh, the other thing you may also want to do is set your read-only flag. Uh, a lot of times our users don't want the, the people doing the scanning to be able to update or change that, that date time uh, value. So we can just make it read-only. It'll still be visible on the screen, but they can't modify it. Uh, likewise, you actually might want to make the lookup results be read-only, just to eliminate any confusion that these are settable fields, because in this case they're, they're not necessarily. Uh, as a matter of fact, why don't we make it read-only for description, and we'll make current location uh, overridable and settable. So there we have uh, pretty much the definition of the lookups. And just to show it in action, we should probably set up a form to allow capture of this data. Uh, if we didn't set up this form, we would, um, we would be presented with the default form, which is going to look very similar to this. Uh, so I can clean this up a little bit. All right, I'll put the scan date at the bottom here. Uh, this won't be the prettiest thing. I'm not known for my, my artistic ability. but what? And there we have it. So the next step in this case would be to deploy to the device. And, and once we do that, we can go through actual scanning of data. Uh, and I can show you how that works.